Building a real-time chat app used to be something that would take at least weeks of development time. But with Firebase it becomes almost trivial because the SDK handles all of the state management and data syncing between the client and server for you. It's so easy in fact that I built an entire chat app in the last 24 hours that you can use right now. And over the next few minutes, I'll show you exactly how I built it using Angular Fire and Firestore. If you're just finding the channel, like and subscribe. And if you leave a comment below, you'll have a chance to win either a sticker or a t-shirt on the live stream later this week. Now, the first thing I want to talk about in this video is data modeling, because there's no one-size-fits-all for every chat feature. The first thing every app will need is a user authentication system, and then some public user profile information saved in a user's collection in Firestore. That's pretty straightforward, but you have a lot of different options when it comes to modeling the relationship between users, chats, and individual messages. I think the logical first approach that most people would take is to set up a collection of chats, and then for each of these chats create a sub-collection of messages. This is a good way to go because you can save all of your chat metadata on one small document and then query as many messages as you need from the sub-collection. And as an alternative, you might make this a root collection so you can query the messages across all of the different chats throughout your application. For example, a root collection would allow you to query all the messages for a specific user across all of the different chats that they're participating in. I think this approach is the most flexible, but the drawback is that you need to execute a document read for every message that you show in the UI. In this video, we're going to take a completely different approach by modeling each chat as its own document and then embedding the messages for that chat on the document. This method is fast and simple, but there are some limitations. First, we can no longer query the individual messages because they're embedded on the document. We can only sort them client-side. And the second thing is that documents are limited to one megabyte of data, which is conservatively somewhere between 250 and 1,000 messages per document. To address this limitation, we'll set up a cloud function that will either archive or delete older messages. And this has the added benefit of keeping the document size relatively small, so the initial load should always be very performant. If we look at the actual database, you can see that each chat has an owner, and then each individual message is an object inside this messages array. It contains the user ID, a created at timestamp, and the message content. When a user is logged in and they create a new chat, it will create this document with their user ID as the owner ID. This will give us a URL that the user can then share so other authenticated users can use this link and then participate in the chat. Currently all the chats are public, but check out episode 75 if you want to learn more about user authorization in Firestore. Now let's get to building this thing. The first thing you'll need is an Angular app with Angular Fire and Firebase installed. I'm not going to cover every single line of code in detail, but you can find the full source code on angularfirebase.com. We have three main resources in our code that we'll focus on. The first one is our authentication service, which gets a user logged in and saves their information to Firestore. Then we have a chat service, which handles all the interaction with the chat, like creating new ones and adding messages to it. And then we have a chat component, which handles displaying the actual chat information in the UI. The chat component will be loaded by the Angular router, and you can see here that it's nested under a dynamic ID, so we can save each chat under its own unique URL. The first thing we'll look at is the auth service, and we're not going to go through it line by line, but I just want to show you generally what's going on. You can get a more detailed explanation in episode 55. The first thing we're doing is we're listening to the Angular Fire auth state, which is the currently authenticated user, and then we're going into Firestore and grabbing a related user document with their profile information. Then we also have a handful of methods to sign the user in with Google and also sign out. And the one unique line of code that you'll see throughout this video is this get user method, which converts the user observable to a promise so we can later use it with async await. This is just much easier to work with when it comes to writing data to Firestore. So now that we have a way to manage user data, we're going to go into our chat service and build out the actual methods that control our chat. The service will use Angular Firestore along with our auth service, the router, and will also import Firestore directly from Firebase app. The first method we'll write is get chat, which just retrieves a chat document from the Firestore database. We're going to want the chat document to be retrieved as an observable because it will be constantly changing. And we'll also want to tell Angular Fire to map the document ID along with the data payload as the final result from this observable. This will just make it easier to pass the document ID around once we get to the main component here in a few minutes. The next method create will add a new document to the database. We can make it an async function because all write methods in Firebase are promise based. When we fire this create method, we want to ensure that we have the currently authenticated user's user ID. 
We can get it by awaiting the promise, and then we'll set up a data payload here with the user ID, a timestamp, and then also an empty array of messages. From there, it's just a matter of making a reference to the chat's collection, and then we'll call the add method to add this data as a new document. When that operation is complete, we'll go ahead and use the Angular router to navigate to the URL with that chat ID. That takes care of creating a new chat room. Adding messages to the chat follows a very similar process. We'll once again create an async function that takes the chat ID and the message content as an argument. Then we'll determine the current user's ID with our get user method. And then we'll set up a data payload with the user ID, the content, and a created at timestamp. We're going to use a relatively new method in Firestore, which is the array union method. It changes the behavior of updates when working with arrays. So if we have a unique object, it's going to append that object to the end of the array. The nice thing about this is that it ensures every message is unique and item potent. In other words, if we accidentally submit the same data payload twice, only one of those objects will actually be added to the chat array. And that's actually a really nice advantage over working with a dedicated collection for your messages. The last thing I'm going to show you here requires some pretty advanced RxJS knowledge. If you get completely lost with this code, it's understandable, and I recommend that you watch my Firestore Joins video to get a better idea of what's going on here. So the purpose of this method is to join the user profiles to the individual chat messages. This will ensure that our chat messages always show the most recent user profile image and username on the message itself. This can get pretty complex because a user can post multiple messages to a single chat room, but we don't want to redundantly read their profile data over and over again. So what we do is we take the original chat document and find all of the unique user IDs within that messages array. Then we read all those user profiles concurrently using the combine latest method. And lastly, we recompose the original messages object so that every message also has a user property with the user profile data. The end result is that we have a single object that has all the chat messages and all the user profiles and everything is synced up in real time. So that takes care of most of the hard stuff. Now we can get into the chat component and build out the UI. This component will depend on our chat service and also activated route from the Angular router. We have two properties on this component. We have the chat observable, which is the actual data that we want to show in the UI, and then new message, which is the form input that the user will enter to add a new message to the chat. Now, because this component is loaded by the Angular router, we can grab the document ID using activated route, which we do by saying route snapshot param map get ID. We can use that ID to first set up a source observable of the chat messages. And you could just stop at this point if you only need the messages, but we also want to join the users to this original observable. So we'll set up the chat property as the observable return from the join users method. For this demo, I'm just going to use the most basic type of form that you can use in Angular, which is an ng model form. These are also called template driven forms, and basically we're just going to take the value from a form input and send it to our send message method, which will update Firestore. And the last little tip here is that whenever working with a real time array and looping over it in Angular, you should set up a track by method. This just tells Angular to only re render items that have changed, and it will dramatically improve the user experience and performance. Now we can switch over to the HTML and we'll set up an ng if statement that unwraps that chat observable. You'll notice I'm doing this on an ng container, which allows us to set up a context in this template without actually rendering any DOM elements. So once our chat observable data is ready, we can just use it as this chat variable throughout the template. From there, I'll set up an ng for loop and loop over the messages in the chat messages array. Because they're all embedded on the document, we don't have to wait for anything asynchronous. And this is the point where we'll also want to use our track by function. From there, we'll have access to the message itself, plus some information about the user. And the final step is to set up our form. If we use ng-model, it will bind this new message property to the component TypeScript. And then if the user clicks the Enter key, we'll go ahead and submit their chat message. And just for good measure, we'll also add a submit button for users that don't have an Enter key. That takes care of the front end code, but there's still one thing that we have to address to really make this a usable feature. As I mentioned earlier, this data model will only work up to one megabyte, at which point Firestore will start rejecting new messages. We can actually address this with a very simple cloud function that just listens to the incoming messages, and if we get over a certain point, it will just either archive or delete the oldest messages. If you look over here on the left, I'm adding new messages, and once I get over 10, it's going to start deleting messages on the right. That's my cloud function working in the background, and I don't know if something changed recently, but there's almost no latency on these requests. The cloud function round trip finishes in just a few hundred milliseconds. 
So I already have Cloud Functions initialized in this project with TypeScript, and the only thing I'm doing is importing the admin SDK and initializing it. Then we'll go ahead and define Firestore as our database. Then we can name our function archive chat. Then we'll have it point to our chat collection and only run when the document is updated. The purpose of this function is to look at the current size of the messages array. If there's more than 50 messages in there, or if the messages characters are greater than 10,000, then we'll want to start deleting or archiving those messages. It's not actually implemented here, but you could use JSON stringify to check the total length of the object as a string. Then you can roughly estimate the total size of the document based on the length of that string. So if we determine that the array is too big, then we'll go ahead and start splicing items from the beginning of that array, or the oldest messages. Then you'll also notice that I'm setting this up as a batch write, because you might want to add the deleted messages to some other location. If that is the case, you definitely want to make this an atomic batch, because you don't want the delete operation to succeed and the update to fail, then you would lose those messages forever. And lastly, we'll just go ahead and return null. If these conditions are not met, we won't make any update to the existing document. Now we have a basic chat feature up and running. Make sure to check out the link in the description and play around with the live demo based on this code. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And I realize that we went through that code pretty fast, but I'm working on a fully fledged chat feature for the Ionic course, which will be released in the next week or two. So if you want to see more features at a slightly slower pace, then I recommend upgrading to a pro membership to get access to that course. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.